Hey, what's up everybody? I'm about to shut the shop down and I forgot to make the introduction. Crazy me. I haven't had time to go back and make the pieces that I want to show you with the cheesy fan, but I'm doing something else that I thought I'd film and show you. So let's jump into that. All right, see you there. First test, we're gonna do low voltage. We got a spark gap set up right here. It's adjustable. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. We got the cheesy fan. Uh, we got a bunch of other madness. But for this first test, I just want to see if like a 500 volt charge in this capacitor will fire this in the proper direction. If it doesn't, we're going to have to switch some wires around. Let's just see what happens. We're going to go to about, uh, well, I don't know. There's 400 volts. 430 volts. Let's see if it goes the right way. Oh, not yet. You gotta go to a higher voltage. I'm just gonna keep bringing it up until it fires. Well, we're at a thousand volts and it's still not firing. The gap is pretty close. I would expect it to fire. Let's just do a one shot at 2000 and see if that fires. There we go. Nope, that did not fire. Our gap is fairly small. Maybe it's not small enough. Okay, our gap is now adjusted. If that don't fire, I don't know what to tell you. Let's try it again. There's 3,000 volts. Still nothing. That should fire. Still no fire. I guess I'm just gonna have to go up with voltage until it fires. And there's 2.5. There it went. I saw... I saw a big flash right there, which is not necessarily a good thing. Okay, I reevaluated what I saw. What I saw was the, the safety gap go off. The safety gap is right there. So the safety gap went off because my voltages are just too high. So I'm going to back it back down and try it again. There's 1.7. There's 2,000. Still, it's still too far away. I gotta adjust that thing so it's almost hitting, I guess. Which is fine. Okay, they're practically touching. Practically. So, There's 1.5k. Think. <laughs> it actually hit. Oh, it's going the it's going the wrong way. Now this should run. 1.5. Haha. <laughs> Now they moved. It is spinning the wall the wrong way. I need to switch these wires around. Well, I'll do that. Okay, I reversed the wires. I did adjust the gap. I may need to tweak it a little. So, let's see if it goes the right way now. There we go. So we're at about 1.5 kilovolts. Well, these low voltages are difficult. Let's go up just a little. Uh, 
<laughs> As expected, the fan kind of tried to fly off. And this thing is cruising like a bruising. And I need to adjust that. Capacitor is discharged. It gets really out of balance really quick. Which I did actually kind of expect. Man, that thing really gets moving, but it also, there it went, really gets out of whack. So easy. Well, it works. Now we need to uh, take that disc off, put some counterbalance on it, and then we'll be pretty good, I think. Wowzers. All right, I wanted to show you a little bit more on this guy, how I made it. So I think this is a some block of wood, or I don't even know what this is. It came out of my materials. And then uh, this is a phenolic material, and I've got two acorn nuts on there, and then an acorn nut on there, and I added a uh, balancing wheel. Probably move should move all this in a little closer, or put it on the other side. See, I'm I'm actually pushing on that, and it's hitting. So that's it's all pretty tightly adjusted there. Um, so the whole circuit is a uh, watt meter to a variac to a microwave oven, to a bridge, to a 0.4 microfarad cap, or 4 microfarad I should say, 4 UF, um, and we got the cheesy fan, which hasn't exploded yet, but my mouse went flying across the room earlier, I think he fell down in there and went flying, it was quite funny, um, I gotta be careful, this whole thing looks like it's trying to move around, and then I got the all the coils connected, I've got 20 in parallel and then those in series so five banks of 20 okay and then the 20 or those five banks of 20 are in series so um, it gets me to about two ohms and uh, I did that for this particular test because I wanted low resistance I should try it with the high resistance as well but with these kind of voltages I got to be pretty careful Then I've got uh, a diode over here so that things can only go one way and then I've got a big bank of capacitors over there for uh, another purpose. I have it jumpered out right now. Here's another thing that I made. Let's see what you guys can guess what that is. That's for another day. If you ever get to see it again, I don't know. Haven't had any luck with it. Let's put it that way, but it sure looks amazing. Anyway, that's all I got for you right now. So let's uh, let's continue testing. Okay, I've added a counterbalance, which is a uh, little washer here. Hopefully it does not fly off. And I'll move you to this side so you can kind of see what's going on. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. That, that sounds cool. That thing is moving too. I'm actually really curious of what the torque is. I'm gonna let it stop <laughs> and then I'm gonna charge it up. I'm gonna hold it and turn it real slow and see how see how strong the torque is. Mm, looks like the Oh that's probably about right. Alright. It's at about two thousand volts. 
I'm gonna hold this. Oh yeah, that's got some torque. Those things are really finicky. We are discharged. I'll bring this one out a little. A little more. And I'll bring this one in a little more. Man, that sure sounds cool though. It's like toot 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 All right. Here we go again. Gotta check the RPM of that. That is, to say the least, fast. Cool. Let's look at the oscilloscope. Okay, so this is a one time shot. The yellow is the cap voltage. We will measure the yellow for the moment. So we go from 1.7 to kilovolt to negative 40. Those are errors in the probe. We could probably call it 1.7 kilovolt to zero. The current on the blue is zero there, and we max out at about um, 36.2 amps. And then uh, if we back up a little bit, our, our pulse starting here, you can see there's like a RF oscillation noise there. And then the pulse is, roughly speaking, um, 282 microseconds. And then from the tip of the pulse to the bottom of the current is about 3.088 milliseconds. So I'm not sure yet, but I think that's an induction curve. That's the induced... Um, induced current into the actual system, which is very interesting because that's remember we're we're nailing it with a spike and then we're inducing all that. So I think I'm gonna put some probes across the uh, coil end and see where the voltage is at. Okay, well there's what it looks like. Um, it's hard to see what's going on. The purple trace is now connected across the motor. Um, it is on 500 volts per division. So roughly speaking uh, in this portion here uh, we start at about uh, let's go maybe here. So 1.7 we started out about 1.7 on the yellow ended at about zero. There's some error because I'm at such high tolerance or I mean such high scaling here that you know 40 volts is perfectly fine for error on these probes and go back over to the uh, pink and you can see we have um, the exact same amount dumped in there and what's interesting to me anyway is that if we come all the way down here alright I'm gonna leave that cursor right there I'm gonna zoom way over here at the end of the current so at the end of the current we actually have roughly 80 volts of induced potential so like if I go here that's 20 so that means that the actual the actual discharge right takes place here this is the actual discharge anything past that which is the slope that's going down here 
is actually seems to be induced which is rather interesting and it looks like the coil is ringing let's get an idea of what this is this is when the diode switch off there's a diode in the circuit so let's change this over to Hertz real quick it's easier just to tell me so 19 kilohertz 19.5 kilohertz is is the ring now I find the uh, the very beginning here very interesting see what's going on here there's a bunch of stuff going on here so let's let's zoom way in and uh, we'll do another single shot and hopefully we can capture a little more data that way so that looks like the initial flash over where it actually flashes over there's a nice interesting arc 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 and then it conducts so that must be the spark leading into it or something no, I'm not sure that's very interesting to me right now I'm not quite sure what is actually happening there but it looks like to be a little spark there anyway yeah very interesting now what I want to know is uh, what's the RPM alright to capture the RPM I've just zoomed way out we're going to um, do a single shot and then we'll record that data so there's our uh, there's our RPM see it's slowing down oh I hit the wrong button should have let it go it would have ran let's do it again it'll stop now on its own I forgot I hit a single shot it's slowly moving so it's a bit interesting there so it went from uh, no RPM and we'll divide this out here let me do the math real quick we're gonna go one two three one two three four we're gonna go five so that we can measure it so it's inducing a, a pretty low amount of voltage because these coils are in uh, series there's only there's 20 in parallel and five of those in series so it's a very small turn count compared to what it used to be now that is a little bit faster RPM <laughs> and a lot higher voltage let's just go somewhere over here and and see what it was so five okay nine point five Hertz I'm gonna do that one more time on camera here we go it's pretty balanced it sounds really cool I think I need to make an adjustment. Oh, they are. They are flashed over. This one needs to go out a little. It actually, uh, actually, this whole thing needs to be adjusted a little better here.
Wow. The thing was broken. I'm flicking on and off the cat voltage switch. And that's it. Needs another adjustment apparently. I'm just under voltage. Let's just turn the voltage up a little bit. There you go. Yowzers. It sure sounds it sure sounds cool when it doesn't hit. That thing is moving. Well, there you go. It runs. And it really, really, really rips. All right. Cool beans, man. Well, that's pretty well the experiment. There's a lot of theory and uh, things behind it. That's a four microfarad cap, by the way. It's a 10,000 volt guy, but uh, I really want to run this at less than 3,000 um, because my breakdown voltage of my wire is roughly around that range. Um, so I have a safety spark gap built onto the circuit board over there, right behind that little red cl clip. And, uh, yeah. Alright, well, thanks for watching. More on this another day. I just wanted to film this and get it out there for you guys to kind of see what I was up to. Um, and, yeah. That's that. Thanks for watching. God bless. See you later. Bye-bye.